Hello, hello, hello. Crocodile making a video. <clears throat> and my voice is all hoarse because, oh my gosh, because I did some heavy primal screaming last night. But I don't call it <clears throat> primal therapy anymore. But those are, I still call it primal screams. So that's that I call it for sure. Primal scream, yes, it was very primal, very primordial. <clears throat> okay, so where do I start with this? Alrighty, I'm gonna have to address the situation the way it is. I got triggered really badly. <clears throat> again in the chat room but you know Paul says you need to block that guy from Australia and you need to also never go into those chat rooms again he says I would do both of these things block and never go into the chat rooms again that's the safest way to deal with it <clears throat> so I said I agree <laughs> But then I'm not going to do it. See, that's the problem. That is that is what the problem is. So, anyway, Zane tortured me in the chat room. And I don't know who these other people are. They could be his own. They could be his exes. Ex photos, you know. So, who knows what's going on. But, man, that pushed all of my buttons, like all of them. My, all of my chakra centers wide open. My jealousy from childhood, everything comes up. The ginger with the freckles. You know, I don't have very many freckles. I have a few freckles. And I'm not a ginger. So, my hair is light green and grows back light blue. Because of Fukushima, so that's what's up now. It's obviously not. It grows back light blue because it's gray. That's why. It's very simple and straightforward. And that's why I put, I spray my hair with hydrogen peroxide water so every day. And that keeps it somewhat, somewhat disguised. <clears throat> but anyway, if you want freckles, you have to get a European Basset Hound. Because those are real freckle gingers. Yeah, they are the cutest beings in the entire eternal universe. And that is the truth. But anyway, I got tortured. Okay, and... And I let the, I let myself feel it all the way. And I also got really, really, really mad. And I <clears throat> I really let it out on my pillow more than ever before, you know. And and then I thought, I hope this is the last time that I have to do this. So but I let it out for a very long time, probably for half an hour straight. Just like Medusa, like like sitting like like on my knees and on my mattress, but standing up while on my knees, and then throwing myself from all the way, like the hands up like this. I need to demonstrate that sometime, but my room is very dark, and then I just pound it down, like from way up high, pound my fists punched my fists into the pillow over and over and over again real hard and <clears throat> imagining killing someone you know so so i killed you that's what i do now in my on my pillow and it's not voodoo it's it is therapy for myself and and the truth is, I love you on every level, and I care about you. 
and I want you to be happy and if you want a ginger lady who is 25 years old then I and you find her I'm happy for you you know good for you I I really want you to be happy yeah this is my main my main agenda here <laughs> I really want you to be happy find happiness you know and 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 rescue a dog and be there for your son and quit drinking and take care of yourself and get sleep you know if you don't get enough sleep you your brain cannot function very well you know then you become psycho the worst psycho I've ever seen yeah. so <clears throat> don't do that to yourself okay and and that's all I can say I can offer this information and if you don't accept if you don't agree with that information then there's nothing I can do to help you you know but I offer this out of love not because I try to be bossy or try to be a guru or something or virtue signaling you know I get all of these things so um, <coughs> so I really let that let the shit out and it was good it felt it felt um, it was it was very inflamed but and I screamed Medusa screams primal screams and that's why my voice is like <coughs> almost gone <coughs> and it was important to do this and and then after I did that I went in the bathroom and was trying to get ready to go to sleep and and then it was still unfinished business so and then I went to my art painting the blue god in the washroom you know I always go to that one it's like a shrine and <coughs> and I said to the blue god blue god you have to help me you need to help me with this and the tears were just running down my my streaming down my cheeks and you have to help me with this because I don't know where this is going. I don't want this to get really bad or something, you know. And and I don't know how to deal with this. And the blue god said, you are dealing, you are already dealing with it. You are dealing with it the right way. You are going into it. That's the inwardness meditation process. <clears throat> and also talking to the blue god is part of that. And so I, I looked into the eye of the blue god, the same eye that appeared to me during my Pierre Straponica hallucination in 2013. And the blue god said to me, so you already went for the anger, okay? You did that. You, you really let all of that out. But it's unfinished business if you don't address what's underneath that anger you know we can let anger out all day long most people act it out on other people you know and that's really the worst and that's what you did with me you know you acted out you are, you have hatred towards me and i can clearly sense that <coughs> and you're acting it out and <coughs> And you would probably hit me, and and I would hit you back. You better believe it. So, but, but, yeah, I don't let someone, I don't let a man, bully me around, and <clears throat> and and dictate things to me in my life. You know how I have to behave and. And what, what you consider to be a natural person versus what I consider to be a natural person. You consider to be, you know, you want me to not even talk to Frank, for example, you know. Come on now, be honest with yourself. You, know? you don't even want me to say 
Frank love and kisses and all of this. Frank deserves that, those kisses and that love. He's giving me a lot of love. Okay, He deserves love back. And whoever gives me love deserves love back. And I'm not dating anyone. So this is not like like someone is cheating or something. And I can have multiple boyfriends on the internet. That's not, that's still not a harem. You know, I make fun of this, but it's not, you know. So if I had 10 boyfriends and they came visiting alternatingly, <clears throat> well, then I can say I have a harem, you know, officially. But I don't, okay? I'm living, I'm a vocal, I'm voluntarily celibate for 11 years, okay? And for a reason, because, for many reasons, because I don't want to hurt Paul, and this is, even though we're not together, I don't want to hurt him, it will hurt him real bad, because he still clings to me psychologically, you know, he is, um, his, his libido is finished completely. You know, it's very sad, you know, and I think that I, it's, I'm, it's my fault because, because of flirting with men for the last, I don't know, for the last 20 years, you know, I've been flirting with other men and it's, <clears throat> and it's because, because the relationship with him is just not fulfilling for me on any level, okay? physically not and I need a bigger guy and I'm not ashamed about saying this you know so and and also he doesn't know how to touch a woman and and he's a crybaby and he's a complainer and whiner and that's a lot of there's a lot of issues you know and but but his heart is in the right place. He loves animals. He's an animal rights activist, okay? He's on board with my vision for the future. That's, that means a lot to me, you know? So, and he's a deeply compassionate person. And I love him like a father, okay? He's older than me. So I really love him, you know? He's my family. And leaving him, that would make me very worried, you know. I, I wouldn't know what, what's going to happen to him. And he also warned me, and he said, if you leave me stranded there, you know, then you know, something, then he might end up getting very sick or something, you know. So that, that's, that kind of puts a vice on me psychologically. And, and it's not that's not that's not very good, you know. Sam Wagner would get mad at that. He would say that is that's extortion, emotional extortion, you know, to do that. You know, say that if you leave me, I'm I'm be I'm gonna be finished or something. Or, you know, it, so that's 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 blackmailing basically. So, and so, you know, there, he has a lot of negativity and, and he's not on board with, well, first of all, primal therapy is a red flag for him and always was. And what I'm, what I want to do is a red flag, even though I am, I am, I'm moving out of primal therapy with this. So it's no longer primal therapy. But he's for him. It's still the same thing. <clears throat> he thinks, you know, the way he deals with it is he just suppresses it and puts his mind onto something else, and that doesn't that doesn't finish the business. You know, if I did this last night, then go to bed without going to the blue god and saying what I needed to say, what's underneath. And this is what I learned in primal therapy. You know, I had a crush on my therapist, Jonti, and 
he was the main therapist there and it, and this is the, the what always happens with me you know wherever i am i always have to crush on on the leader kind of guy you know the king <laughs> it's like my hormones dictate that to me it's always been like this and and so but he was married obviously and and he was also not allowed to engage with the clients in any physical way. That was he would be kicked out if he did that. And I got pretty close <laughs> with that in the in the therapy sessions because I <clears throat> because because of the way I behaved. I mean, I was it was really bad, you know. And um, <laughs> and but. It was it was really really wonderful how he dealt with it, and how he dodged that off, and how he he knew exactly what to say, and he said this is an old pain you know from childhood, and <clears throat> you know what you have to say, and so he would always start the sentence, John D please, and then I would finish the sentence. And I would say, John D, please love me. And then I would say it a couple of times, and then, and then I would be absolutely floored and sobbing and and crying rivers and and just feeling that entire thing. And also going back to my mother, the Ice Queen, and who was not emotionally available for me and so that's what I did and that's what I learned and that is so I mean I'm so infinitely grateful to them that they taught me this I'm infinitely grateful to Jonti and Dr. Arthur Janoff and, and Franz Janoff and Leslie and Howard and 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 all of these cool people and Brenda and David and all of these and Michelle all of these people I am infinitely grateful to all of you so what I took with me into my life is is a real tool you know how to deal with life you know instead of suppressing it instead of drowning it out with news or with slayer you know which I last night which which I did last night for a, a while you know, I also danced it out with slayer and that was pretty good but obviously that is that's not enough okay and also most people just try to suppress it and most people will numb themselves with alcohol or drugs or with act outs, you know, of any sort, with promiscuity and violence and so on and always acting out on other people. And that's what I don't want to do anymore in my life. I really don't want to do it anymore. So I have done that too out of ignorance in the past. Okay? I don't want to do that anymore. So I don't, also don't want to throw a pot from the stove anymore. I did that last summer. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm absolutely determined on this. And so I know what to do. You know, I let it out on my pillow in the, in my room safely. I close the window. I close the door. You know, you can't have an animal in in the room with you when you do this. I want to set up a therapy center. I want to have a storage container where I I set up like a where where we have padded walls on the inside and making it soundproof also with the styrofoam layer as well where we can close the doors where we can actually really scream it out without any neighbor hearing it so I scream it into my pillow hopefully the neighbors don't hear that but it's always better to have the primal room, as they call it, you know, the soundproof. I'm, I'm not going to call it primal room. 
the soundproof room that with padded walls where we can really let that out safely and this will be part of this this will be inside of the the commercial greenhouse okay and on the outside of that storage container i will have padded walls as well and so when we have the group therapy then we can while we're in the in the main room in the glass house we can pound out the stuff also on the mattress that's outside of that and we can cry it out but if we need to scream we have to go into the soundproof room and that's how it needs to be done and I think that'd be awesome and I know exactly how to do it I know how to train people I know exactly how to guide people through this I'm guiding myself through this right now and what I did last night going to the blue god painting the blue god said to me so now you have to do what you've always done you know you have to go to that feeling that's underneath all of that anger and and you know the the hurt and so really dig down you know why is the hurt there i i'm jealous okay why am i jealous because i feel abandoned i feel like i don't feel loved i feel tortured i feel i feel i feel like dumped you know like garbage and ignored and other women are more important than i am they are they're the st the the shining stars and I am the trailer mama, you know, and and so that that pain is very intense, and it goes back to my childhood, of course, you know, because my brother is five years younger than me, and when he was born, it felt like I was being replaced because I'd never received love in the first place. If I had received real love from my mother, unconditional love, with all, you know, constant hugging and all of that, then I would not be feeling that afraid of that baby brother, you know, taking all the love, the potential love away from me. And it's a theme that goes through my entire life. Now, Annalise and I dealt with that in the play therapy room and she saw that right away that that I have massive jealousy issues and I don't need a psychopath to to be pushing those buttons you know deliberately deliberately doing this hurting me like this you know so and I'm not gonna tell you why you do it. You have to find out why you do this. You know, you need to dig down deep into yourself, okay? Dig down and find out why you do this. So, it's never really helpful if someone else says, oh, this is your issue, that's what you got. I have, I mean, I. I I'm already I already see a whole bunch of stuff with you but telling you that would just that's just more words on top of more words you have to really find out for yourself you know you have to go into it so but you know what I do with my inwardness process is not it's not a pressure on you as a person at all. I'm just sharing this with you as a friend and and to show you and everyone who watches the video what the inwardness meditation process is all about. You know? So after I feel the anger, the blue god says to me, so what's there underneath, you know? What is it that you need from him? And then I had to get into it, and I didn't really want to. I tried to avoid it, you know. So, because, you know, because of, like, you know, pride also, feminism, like, 
Oh, I'm not gonna let him dominate me in any way, emotionally or in any way. I'm not gonna surrender myself to that man. I'm not gonna be submissive. But I am. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. Hormonally, I am for sure. And, and politically, I am mad that I am getting into this emotionally because I don't want to be dominated by someone like this in any way, okay? And and that's why I tried, I really tried to, I really tried to suppress that and move on, you know, but then it's your energy just comes back into my into my mind into my brain into my life in the chat room you know you know you know what you're doing your energy is, is that's a very dominant energy that comes in there very very boisterous <laughs> and So, you know, the, mer the, I don't know, the, the psychopaths, <laughs> whatever the, the description, the, the psychology definition of psychopaths, you know, they actually think the psychopath is the alpha male, so. And that comes across to the, the woman like this hormonally for sure, you know. But but Sam Wagner disagrees with that, and I I want you guys to watch the video. He says that that the the men who are who are in control of their emotions, the ones that are that are that are strong standing and saying, oh, here are my boundaries, but still loving. Those are the alpha ones and not the ones that are running the show. So <clears throat> I agree with him, you know. I think that's th that's definitely true. But I keep swaying away from the subject, what I really... So what the Blue God said to me is you need to feel the need that's underneath, okay, and the need underneath is, Zane, please love me. There's a powerful emotion in that. Just to say that sentence, I'm doing this for myself, okay, there's no pressure on you at all. The, I'm, this is my inwardness meditation process. This is my therapy that I have to do for myself. And I had to say it several times. I had to say it. Baby, love me. <laughs> Please love me. Baby, why are you cruel to me? You know, I kept saying that, but, you know, I'm laughing now, but... But I was crying and crying, crying and sobbing. Because no one was watching me while I was doing it. Now I'm making this official here. And so that makes me feel awkward and and it makes me giggle, of course, you know. And I know that this triggers a heck of a lot of men out there. But I cannot I'm sorry, you know. I have to be honest with you guys, you know. It this it is what it is. This is what I feel right now, so Maybe I'll get through this, I'll get come out the other end, okay, and then I will <clears throat> I will no longer be having this energetic tethering going on, you know, and I said to the blue god, he's tethering me energetically, okay, so this is not good, you know. I I don't know what he's doing. He might be doing voodoo, he might be doing witchcraft on me, you know, and you even mentioned something like this before last summer and that got me that got me really alarmed and because there's another guy out there his name is psychic bob and he 
Psychic Bob talks about how he has once done a love spell on a woman and and she busted him on that <clears throat> and she found out that he did the love spell because he wasn't really for her and she was really mad at him that he made her all like totally drawn like completely like magnetically drawn to him you know and and he felt bad about it later on that he did that these kind of things exist you know and I know they do that kind of stuff in the Masonic temple and and just want to say one word about that Helena Petrovna Blavatsky who was one of the blue gods incarnations, the one, the one before Jiddu, Krishna Morty. She wrote about this in her books, and she said in the very beginning of all of her books, you have to really understand that any of these things, you know, whatever, some people call it witchcraft or wicca or whatever or white magic or magic in general or meant using mental powers you know she said we can practice that we can get into this this is done through meditation also but you are not allowed to use that for your own egoic advantage, okay, ever, okay? You never do that. Sam Wagner made a video about the word evil. Evil, he said. <laughs> I don't use that word, you know. So that word is religious and... That word it has too much emotional baggage on it. It comes from an o emotional baggage. Evil, like, you know, it's like there's too much, there's already too much judgment in that, in that word itself. So that's why I don't use it. I never used it. Paul uses it. It comes from it is adversity it is it is when people do things that are greedy or that are selfish self-serving for their own egoic needs or their very neurotic needs then they don't see the other being in that process and that's what some people call evil because you know when you torture me that's what Sam Wagner would call evil even though he's the son, comes from completely scientific background, and and he also talked about that, that this word is really not so super accurate, but a lot of people use it, so I don't use it. I only only talking about the word right now, so it is. I'm not even gonna label it. It is cool, okay, to use magic powers for your own egoic advantage okay that's not how we move things forward and helena petrovna blavatsky made that also very clear in her books that we cannot use it for that that the only way we can use magic or you know mental powers and meditation practices and all of that is to make the world a better place and that's what I do okay I would never take advantage of someone else or you know use someone else's past or whatever they shared with me use that against them to 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 humiliate them or make them look bad in front of other people or gossip about them or laugh about them or 
or keep him in a, in a bondage or in a vice, you know. So all of that comes from unfinished business, you know, in yourself. So I'm showing you how this is being done, okay. I show it to you through this experience that I have with you. And the exp this experience, this life experience, because we get triggered, you know, we fall for someone. That's part of life, you know. And I didn't want this to happen, but it's happening. So, and whatever you do with that is totally up to you, you know. So, I'm not putting any pressure on anyone. This is not a pressure video. This is only for myself and to show how this works. So the only way I can do this is I let the anger out and then I have to say, Zane, please love me. Please love me. Please love me. Please, baby, love me. Please. Ice King, love me. <sighs> Please care about me. Of course, you know, I want you to love me on all levels. But, <clears throat> but the most important thing is I want you to care about me. And that's where the tears are. That's where the tears are. That's where the tears are. More, more than the sex and all of that. More than that, that merging, you know. That's, that's the foundation for me to feel safe. Also, you know, I I have to feel totally safe, and and I need you to care about me. I didn't know whether this was gonna come out in the video. And I, last night I felt like. I said to the blue god, I'm not going to make a video about this. I was too embarrassed. I said, this is too embarrassing. But the blue god said, but you're already, you know, showing people how this is going. And, and that's what we're going to be doing when we get to therapy center. So I'm going to be filming that. <laughs> you better believe it. And I better get used to, you know, these kind of totally uncensored type of videos where I'm not even sitting down, I'm just interacting with people like I do in my daily life. So where I can't even think about how this is going to come across on the camera with my fat belly and so double chin and all of that <laughs> but it's coming out now and and I see I see clearly what what this is you know caring is love you know that's what I really mean that's the most important thing there is please love me please care about me Care, care about me, big old dog mother. And then I think about how amazing that would be if you cared about me. so amazing and this is where I have to go you know in my own therapy process 
this is where it, where it goes. And then, and then it goes to my mother. Mommy, love me. Mommy, see me. See my pain and my needs. Mommy, care about me. Mommy, don't go away. Don't go away, you know, and cling to her legs. And say, don't go away, please. And almost every night they went to some kind of party. Every night. They knew the whole town. They were constantly invited by everybody. Like, every night was another party scheduled. And when I smelled her perfume, I knew she was. Go they were gonna be leaving. I saw her, she put jewelry on. I wasn't so attached to my dad because he was almost never there. But mommy going away to some kind of party somewhere, and I don't know when they're coming back. And I was alone at home before my brother was born. It was a nightmare. Even though I had a nanny. So it was a nightmare when mommy left. And the coldness also. And then when my brother was born, then then I felt replaced and so then when that's when the jealousy started and crying this through is working on it that's real psychological work and it's fantastic it's wonderful it is stellar to do this you know this is real empowerment this is real total liberation and I recommend that to you and I recommend that to everybody to do this. And I hope the video does not get hacked away by a hacker because I'm now over 40 minutes. So it seems to be working a little bit better now after that update. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you and I love you infinitely much. Many kisses, infinitely many kisses.